This is an A4988 stepper driver. They're one of the most common stepper drivers you'll find in 3D printers. They're cheap, they're easy to use, and uh, they're noisy. There's just no getting around it. This is the cause for a lot of your stepper motor noise. And this is a TMC2208. So this is a near perfect drop and replacement for the traditional A4988, except for it cuts down on the noise of your 3D printer by quite a bit. Now I'm sure you guys have seen the more deluxe versions of these, they're uh, kicking around, but they usually require you to run additional jumpers from the steppers to other parts of your setup to be able to control them, whereas these ones don't require any of that. Now your ability to manipulate them is a little bit limited by setting them up this way, but if you're looking to silence your 3D printer, there really is no easier way to go than this. So how do the two line up? Well, they have the exact same number of pins. They are literally just drop and replacements for each other. Uh, you'll want to make sure that you get the orientation correct. So direction is on this side here and there. So you can't just sort of trust the uh, potentiometers on them to say, okay, they're lined up properly because in this case, they're on opposite sides. You'll find various versions of the 2208. Many of them will have the potentiometer mounted on the other side of the board and a hole drilled through that you would uh, stick your screwdriver through to manipulate it. If you've got that type, you definitely want to go with a ceramic screwdriver because it's really easy to accidentally short something out and blow the uh, blow the actual stepper driver. In terms of installation, well, let's get a couple of boards out here and take a look to see how difficult that's going to be. So here we have a standard ramps board, and as you can see, it's already populated by four of the A4988s. So we're just going to add our additional stepper here, which is going to be the 2208. And uh, like we said before, the in this case here, the potentiometer is on the opposite side, but you can just go ahead and check out the pinouts to see where it's supposed to go. So you'll see here, it says direction above this pin, so just line them up and push it in. What other difference is there? Well, you can see how small the heat sinks are on the 4988s. The heat sink that comes with the 2208 is quite a bit bigger. Um, you'll see that there's little pinholes uh, lining on the board right here. That's where the heat's going to come through. That's where the, uh, the solder points are for the chip on it. So just peel off your uh, film on your heat sink, line it up, make sure that you don't make contact with any of the pins. That is absolutely imperative and push it down onto place. Now, if you were looking at other boards like the MKS Gen L, well, it's pretty much the same process because it's the same type of socket. Now, this is where things get a little complicated because as I was saying before, it's an almost perfect drop-in. The only problem with these is that when you put them in, it will reverse the direction of your stepper motors. So you're going to have to deal with that. And there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can invert the direction of the axes that you're installing these on in your firmware. Um, it's pretty easy in Marlin. You would just look for in invert uh, underscore X underscore DIR or invert underscore Y underscore DIR and switch it between true and false. Uh, if you don't have access to your firmware, the next easiest way to do it is simply reverse your connection on the board. So if you've installed this one here, like that, you just pull it off, rotate it 180 degrees and put it back on. Uh, if we're looking at boards like the MKS Gen L, it's not as easy to do because they have these caps on here that allow you to only install the motors one way. But there is a fairly simple way around that. So I mean, you could either cut the wires and reverse them on the motors directly, or these actually aren't attached to the board. So you can essentially, and you can see the red ones already lifted up here. You can just sort of pry back and forth, being careful not to damage the board. And eventually you should be able to work it free. The plastic piece off, you can just rotate it 180 degrees, line it back up with the holes. And just like that, you can go ahead and reverse your connection. Now keep in mind, every time you do this, it is going to loosen up the holes on the plastic. So eventually it's not gonna be the best hold. So really only do it once or twice if, uh, if you're gonna do it at all. As I said before, they are quite a bit more expensive than the a 4988s so you don't necessarily have to replace all of your axes with them. You're going to get your biggest returns from the X and the Y. That'll quiet it the most. Then after that, uh, most people would go with probably the extruder because the extruder is running pretty much constantly, although it's not as loud as the other axes. And then finally your Z if you want to do it at all. 
With most of the printers that I've upgraded with it, it's been sufficient for me to do it with just the X and the Y axis, and it kills like 80 to 90% of the sound. It's, uh, it's absolutely perfect. With a quick little upgrade like this, you can go from a printer that sounds like this, to one that sounds like this. Well, hopefully this helps you out. If it does, toss me a thumbs up to let me know. If not, uh, leave your comments below to let me know what we can improve upon. Uh, if you have any more questions, by all means, toss them in the comments below. And until next time, stay creative.